Culture swap. Swap my culture. So before we get cracking with Turbo Kid, Jack, Mm -hmm. what are we going to do next time? So next time, we will be doing the graphic novel Southern Bastards. So this is another one of my recommendations. um, Yeah. Because I recommended Turbo Kid as well. So I'm really curious what you're going to think of this. And any listeners that are on the fence about reading this, I know we've definitely got one person out there who's considering it. This might be your reason to get it and read it and let us know what you thought. Is it? Are there multiple volumes? So far, there's two volumes released with a third one coming in the summer. Cool. So yeah, it's volume one that we'll be doing then. Yes. Now, I will say, if you like volume one, definitely pick up volume two. Um, so, Southern Bastards, Volume 1, next time. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. But first, Turbo Kid. So, what I think we should do, if it's okay with you, Jack, is a little spoiler-free what we thought, and then we'll go into the spoilers. Because if there's anyone that hasn't seen it, I would implore them to watch it. Yeah, alright, that makes sense. Okay, so, um, a brief plot synopsis. It, um, it takes place in the future. In the year 1997. Yeah. And it's basically, uh, I think, a nuclear war has kind of ravaged the land. And it's now a wasteland. And the currency is water. And the story is basically about a kid trying to survive in that. Like, and he's not like, when I say kid, I don't mean like child. He's like a teenager. But it's him trying to survive in this, like, lawless wasteland. Would you agree with that description? Yeah. What do you think? Spoiler free. I really, li- I really liked it. I think it's a great movie. Yeah. Yeah. What did you like about it? It's just over the top and great. Yeah, I think like, why I recommended it to you is because I thought this would be right up your street. Yeah, it is good. Um, I equally, obviously, really liked it. Or I wouldn't have recommended it. So there's that. Um, we did get some correspondence about this movie. Go on. Joanna has messaged us saying, "Okay." Thoughts on Turbo Kid? In very few words, it's a Mad Max for kids. But instead of the steampunk stuff, you get 80s kids stuff. End of message. Yep. Now, the only thing I would say is I don't think this is necessarily a movie for kids. No, I don't think it is. It's very gory. Yes, beautifully so. Oh, yeah. And it is, it's not... The thing is, it's not realistic gore. Like, it is very over-the-top gore. Yeah. But... I, it's still not suitable for children. No, 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 no. So, you would recommend it? I would 100% recommend this to our listeners. If if someone is listening, right, and they haven't watched the movie yet, and we're about to go into spoiler territory, what would you say to that person? I'd say, it's your choice. We are about to spoil the film, but don't worry too much about it if you don't want it. I'm just glad you listen. I would say, go watch the movie... Then come back, listen to the rest. Spoiler time! So, Liam. Yeah. This movie. This movie, Jack. This fucking movie. Is, oh my god. I Genuinely, I had such a good time watching it. It, it, it really is. It's one of those films that is just, you find yourself just smiling. Like, so, uh, did you watch it on Netflix, yeah? Yeah. Um, I have the Blu-ray, okay? And it, from the moment you put the disc in... It sort of it makes the like once when the when it's loading up, it makes the noises of like a old um, VHS cassette rec- like player oh, really? with the tape going in. So it makes all those noises, and then like it has the static come up, and then it has like the scanning, and then like real like low quality VHS quality images come up. Yeah, and it has like in that like you know like that real chunky like text that you used to get um, when you'd push play on an old school remote. Yes. It has that as, like, you know, the play scene select extras sort of thing. Yeah. And it, yeah. it just, it really does, like, wonderfully harken back to that, like, 80s era of technology. Yeah, I think the whole film is, like, because the point of it seems to be it's, like, a love letter to that era and movies like that. Yeah, exactly. Just, I love the fact that it opens with him doing uh, a sick stunt on his bike. Yeah. And I, I he just I, jumps over a ramp and you're like, I was like, this movie's great. I'm invested in it. It was that quick for you to get invested. Yeah, seriously. That the moment he did that jump, I was like, okay, I now sort of know what this film's doing. Because <laughs> I wasn't sure. Because going into it, I wasn't. I didn't know that it was like a 
deliberately so, over the top, like parody ish sort before, of film. Like, I mean, I, I, I would hesitate to say parody. it's not a parody. It's not a parody. It's a, but it's, it's in the same vein as like, um, what, what film am I thinking of? The fact that, because the fact that it's all set, because it is, it's tongue in cheek. It's not a parody, but yes, it's tongue in cheek. Because it's, it's, it's the whole, like, um, uh, it's the aware. Fact that it's based in the future of 1997. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, I wouldn't say it's self aware, but it is aware that it is referencing other movies, should we say. Yeah, but it's, it is also, it's very deliberately like that. Yeah, no, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so what did you know about this movie before you went in? Absolutely shit all. I knew there was a kid in it on a bike. Now, do you think it's probably better to go into a movie like this knowing that little? Or would you like no, to have I don't, a I don't think it would really matter with this film. It's just such a fun time, isn't it? Yeah, because I don't, I don't think the film... It's not like an in-depth, thought-provoking film. Like, no, the although there are moments. Like, <gasps> there are moments. Well, not really. Okay. Go on, what what moment made you... the do you think was thought, thought-provoking? Well, this is going to get real into spoiler territory here. Yeah, we're doing spoilers. Yeah, I know. But, like, th- I mean, no, spoilers for a little bit later on in the movie. Stop telling people about spoilers. Just do w- talk about the film. It's, this is making me think, could, you, could I love a robot? <laughs> well, uh, yeah, the answer is yes, obviously. Because I think both myself and you, maybe to a lesser extent than me, um, had a little thing for one of the robots in this movie. How was it? How was mine a lesser thing than you? I the moment Apple came on screen, I messaged you and said, "I think I'm in love with her," because I've been in love with her since I first saw the movie last year, Jack. Yeah, which is the same. So I'm the same since I first. No, saw I've the loved film. her longer. That's not how it works. But yeah, no. Apple's just like a great character. What do you think is is what? Why? Like, what makes it? Because here's the thing, right? I think on paper, that character kind of potentially couldn't have worked but the actress Lawrence LaBeouf no relation to Charlotte LaBeouf sadly she definitely does something with that role that just instantly makes her like incredibly likeable and I, I think maybe in someone else's hands it could have been a very different story and I do think a well, lot you say of... that but that, that I mean that would apply to any role in a film right? Yeah no but I think this one particularly um, but why like, like okay why? Because I think right, so so the the role that she's playing is essentially a friendship robot, okay. And when you yeah. first meet her, like she's essentially talking to a dead p- person. Yeah, that whole that whole bit. I I genuinely thought there was going to be a moment where she'd just turn around and go insane. Yeah. So you know, to be able to kind of walk that line between being just immensely adorable and also possibly psychotic. Like um, w- without kind of tipping too much into one or the other camp, I'd say it was quite an impressive acting feat. Like, I think someone else could have maybe played it a little bit wrong, and you'd have been like, "Oh, they're just psychotic," or it just like that that wouldn't have worked quite so well. I don't know how much of that to like. I don't. I genuinely don't know how much of that to apply to an actor or actress. What do you mean? Like, I don't know how much the director has to say with that. Like in my head, a director would go if someone was playing it and not doing that, like not walking the line and was too psychotic. Is that not what the director's for? He goes, no, you're doing it wrong. It's this wrong. Potentially. It's like crap. Potentially. Like, I mean, I'm not trying to, and I'm not trying to Bearing in mind, it's a collaboration. It's so it's also going to come down to, you could equally say, oh, it was the script writer's fault. Yeah, no, 100%. But that's, so that's what I'm, I'm not, I'm not, and I'm not dissing the actress because she was really good. Yeah, I think that's what you need to really focus on is how good she was. I'm slightly worried that you're just a little bit too obsessed with her, which is why you're maybe. No, no, I just, I just think she is absolutely brilliant. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Right. Well, I don't know why you're arguing then. I'm not. I'm just saying. I don't know. I don't know whether I'm not. I'm just saying that you can't give her all the credit. I'm not dissing her. I'm going to give her a lot of the credit. Okay, fine. So, um, yeah. So, yeah. She is a friendship robot, and she basically meets our hero, who is just ever he's ever called the kid in the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, or is his name Jesse? No, he's just called the kid, isn't he? Probably. He's credited as the kid. Yeah. Okay. So you got the kid who's played by Munro Chambers, and again, he's good. Like yep. he, he he has that kind of um, like like just, like I hope the whole the whole cast just have like a real innate likability apart from the villains where you're not supposed to, and they are yeah, almost yeah. like cartoonish the villains. Oh yeah, hundred percent. I think everyone's cartoonish in it because they basically get like it's almost like they're given a trait. Yeah. So the kid is like childish, not in a, you know not terribly, but sort of that kind of childish attitude, naivety almost. Why you've died got, uh, wonder? Sure, you've got uh, Apple, who's friendly. 
you've got the bad guys who are evil. Yeah, you got Frederick. You've got, which one's Frederick? The guy. The yeah, the cool arm wrestler. Yeah. Who's I think his name is yeah, do they call him Frederick the arm wrestler? Yeah. Yeah. And his thing is just he's the he's the badass. Yeah. Which he is for the whole film and it's great. No, he he really is. Um so let's talk about him for a moment then. Um cuz he he does just sort of like wander in and instantly you're just like because it's it's been it's it's a lot of kind of the focus is on the kid for a, for a large part of the beginning of the movie, and then suddenly you've got this arm wrestler who just sort of comes into the film, and again you have no idea like where his allegiances lie. Like you know he's not an out and out bad guy, but equally he has quite a memorable running with the kid like very early on. Yes, where he talks to the kid about um, a manly bubble. Yes, yeah, tells him he's not allowed to stand within arm's length of him. Yes. Which I uh, they they kind of call back to that a couple of times later on, which I I think was is one of the the stronger running jokes in the movie. Yeah, but yeah, no, I, I just think Frederick was just incredible. I see. Th- th- this is my issue: is I think I like this film too much. What do you mean by that? Like everything, every part of it, I'm just like, yeah, I really like that. Yeah, it's it's going to be super hard to be critical about this movie. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I, like it, it's it's literally it's ninety minutes, so it doesn't outstay its welcome. It kind of does what it needs to do it gets the job done and then it's it's onwards i think the only criticism i'd have is i think it's a shame that apple died at the end no see i think that was good because i think the whole because the whole of apple was like because she dies uh three times in the movie yeah possibly four including her actual death i can't remember but i think so i think the whole thing with her dying at the end like that was emotional and it was good and it got the whole like when you die you become a star thing yeah that was nice i, I think it would have been worse if she hadn't died Really? Yeah, because they did it so much that like it it needed to happen. Like it would have been, I think it would have been a worse film if she kept dying and then at the end died and came back again and was like everything's fine. What if like her and the kid just ride off into the sunset and it's like coming soon, Turbo Kid Two? Because I, you know, I, I, personally, I wouldn't have been excited about a sequel. I don't think. I right here's the thing. At the moment, I wouldn't be. If Apple was in the sequel, I'd be like ten times more excited. Yeah. I don't know, buddy. Like, for me, she really was the star of the show. Like, everything else was good, but she was excellent. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like my difference between them all, I think they were all excellent. Yeah. Yeah. I just, it wouldn't, I don't think the story would have been as good an ending if she'd lived. Okay. I don't know. It wouldn't have had the same impact, the whole thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. No, that makes sense. Um, so, yeah. Any, any other thoughts on the film? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. We should probably talk about the gore that's in it. Yes. That is one of the best things about that movie. Uh, yeah, it's super gory. It's just so over the top. There's literally any time anyone gets cut in any way in the film, just gallons of blood spray out everywhere. Yeah. There's a scene where a man. We should probably talk about this scene because I feel like it defines the film's gore and violence. Okay. Uh, there is a scene where a man is cut in half, and his his upper torso lands on one of his friend's heads. Yeah. His lower torso lands on a different friend's head. Yeah. And then later on in the movie, the guy that's got the upper torso on him is also cut in half. Oh, no, no. It's the guy with the legs is also cut in half. Yeah. He then lands on top of the guy that's got the body on top of him already. And you get a stack of (laughs) a man with a body, then another half of a body, and then legs on top of that. Yeah. And it is just so over the top and ridiculous. And it is great. It is just fantastic. Like, this movie does not take itself seriously at all. No, not at all. And I think even the, the cast, like, they're all very aware that they're, they're like... Like, it, it looked like this was a fun film for them to make. Oh, yeah, it definitely comes across that way. Yeah, like, like they all look like, like... Like, it doesn't look like any of them are taking it too seriously either. No. Uh, what did you think of the villains? So we had two kind of real distinctive villains. You've got Michael Ironside, who plays Zeus... Yeah, and that's like that's the film's jaw, if you will. Like that's the big name that the film like slaps all over the poster. Um, and he did it. He did it really well. Yeah, like you might know him from Top Gun or Total Recall or Starship Troopers or so many other movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then you've got another like his his right hand man, if you will. Yeah, is... he never speaks in the film. No, he's he's um credited as Skeletron. Yes, I saw that when I was looking stuff up yesterday. Yeah, because he has like a, a metal skull helmet. Yeah, I thought, for the whole film, I thought he was going to turn out to also be a robot. So that ending where he's not the robot, 
was a big surprise. <laughs> what about the ending where Zeus is a robot? Yeah, exactly. That's the thing, though. So I was thinking the other guy was going to be a robot. Yeah. Then it turns out, no, that guy's normal, but <laughs> Zeus is a robot. Yes. They also That's also a good bit when they... Because uh, when he first discovers that Apple is a robot, the kid is like, oh, can you shoot lasers out of your face? Yeah. And she's like, no, 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 I'm, I'm a friendship robot. We don't do that. And then it turns out that Zeus is exactly the kind of robot that fires laser beams out of his face. Yeah. And I think the, the description is, is he says he's something like a, a, a robot that's brought in for corporations to help streamline their efficiency. Yes, yeah. Which totally makes sense how, you know, in a wasteland environment he would rise to the top. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't explain why he has a laser beam face. No. <laughs> no, I don't see how that's ever useful in his career. No, exactly. Oh, it's just great. It really is. And again, it's the sort of movie that I think another reason why it's hard to be too like nitpicky about it and like pull it apart is because it, it doesn't take itself seriously. So it's really yeah, hard yeah. to be like, you know, oh, this is a terrible movie because a corporate robot has lasers coming out of his face it's like it's it just so doesn't matter yeah exactly so so yes after i finished watching it yeah i uh i went on imdb because i was looking up i want i can't remember what i was looking i was looking something specific up i think i was looking up skeletron are you sure you and, weren't just looking up lawrence leboeuf no i think i was looking up skeletron because i wanted to know what that thing's name was okay and uh i would like the one the rating on imdb is like 6.5 which is uh, 6.7 as of recording that's still ridiculous. Yes, it's uh, what well, it should at least be an eight, I think. Yeah, hundred mm. percent. But then I like so I then like scrolled down to the you know the forumy sort of section on. Oh yes, yes, yes. And yes. someone had I I can only assume it's a troll post because people in there were like, "This seems like you're a troll and you're just trying to get a rise." Yeah. But this guy was like, "It's ridiculous that they're all riding bikes. Why are they not riding dirt bikes?" Which is a very troll thing to say. Yeah. But I was like, "Why? <laughs> who is Chris? Who watched this movie and then was like?" Such a this is stupid. Why are they on bikes? Yeah, the bikes are what's wrong with this movie. Yeah, exactly. Like that's just part of it. The fact that you get ridiculous scenes like a high speed <laughs> pedal bike chase. Yeah, which is um, like, I'll be honest, that's not the first time I've seen that used for comedy effect. Yeah, no, it's it's a great comedic thing. Yeah, um, and it, you know, it, it, as you would expect, it is all shot and filmed like it is a like high speed fast action car chase. Yeah. And it's just a bunch of guys riding on bikes that definitely seem way too small for them. Yes, definitely. So, um, that's, that's, I mean, it's fair to say we both enjoyed it immensely and we don't really have a lot of negative stuff to say about it, do we? No. So that's actually just kind of, let's, let's do some questions about this movie, if you will. Okay. Like, how long do you think you would survive in the wasteland? Uh, probably not that long. Why? I don't think I'd survive well. I'm not a good killer. I think. But I feel like the, the, the kid isn't really a killer up until a certain point. True. I don't know. I feel like I just wouldn't want to survive in that situation. Okay. Fair enough. And um, if if you could get a robot that kind of was as believably um, realistic looking as, as Apple is, shall we say, would you? It's not, the, it's not the way she looks. It's who she is. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, but I mean... Like, what, if, what? if I met Apple in this post-apocalypse world and she seemed to be into me, then yeah, I'd definitely go for it. Oh, I wasn't even talking like in a in a romantic sense. I, I, yeah, I, I know just, you weren't. That's yeah. because you live in a very like... It's because you are a robot. You're a sex robot. I am actually. From 1997. Yeah. I'm, I am a sexy robot. Not what I said. That's what you meant. No, uh, definitely not. Um, what about you? So what about you? How long do you think you'd survive? Oh, like... At least a day. Yeah, I can see that. I feel like you'd meet another survivor. Yeah. You'd maybe talk to them for like half a day. And then they'd either abandon you somewhere. Or kill me. Or just kill you, yeah. Yeah. And the robot thing, we all know the answer. It's just, yes, you would. You wouldn't even care what they look like, really. If they had a slot that you could put it in, you would. Yeah. <laughs> I know you so well. Fair play. At the end of the day, when like most of humanity is dead, does it matter? Like, obviously... Even though it's a robot, right, I will say this, you do still need to get consent. Yeah, 100%. Especially if they're sentient, like the robots in this movie. Yeah. But once you've got the yes, then, you know, crack on. Oh, Liam. What? Nothing. That's a really good, like, moral message. It is. Moral You're message. so earnest. Um, I mean, I'll be honest, like, the main reason I suggested it to you is because I knew you would absolutely love Apple. Because it's, yeah. it's almost impossible not to. Yeah, 100%. Like, I, I think what makes that character so good is just that, like, unbridled enthusiasm. Yeah, she's just super happy. Yeah, 
And there's another character that I'd say you could draw similarities to in um, the US office. Is that uh, the Ellie Kemp's character? Yeah, yeah, Erin, yeah. the receptionist. Like, both just, like, super enthusiastic, like, nearly always happy and, like, nearly always willing to just go with the flow kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's one of the things that I really love about Erin um, in the office is, like, if someone just suggests offhand doing something, like, ridiculous, she's way up for it. And like, in a real, like, unironic sense as well. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, that is I, a, I think that's quite an appealing quality. It is, yeah. And it's like with Apple, you know, there's a great scene where um, the kid's discussing his rules for staying alive in the wasteland. And she's just so up for every rule. Yeah, she's like, I love rules! <laughs> oh, also, can we please just very briefly talk about the gnome stick? The gnome stick is one of the great... It's literally just a garden gnome strapped to the end of, like, a 2 by 4 And when he gives it to her, she's just so fucking happy to have it. And then when she actually uses it as well. She's, like, lethal and terrifyingly violent. Like, there's a great scene where, um, like, all of our main characters find themselves in a pit versus a load of, like, big bads. Yep. And, like, the, the, the kind of... So I say the kid is, like, the hero of this movie, but then Frederick is the more traditional hero, if you will. Like, he's the yeah, guy yeah. that you would think would be the hero. Um, he's making this plan, and he's, like, telling people who they need to go for and what they need to do. And then he sort of says to Apple, right, you need to go for this person, and that's it, she's off. Yeah, doesn't he say you like, you need to hit them as hard as you can or something? Yep, yeah, and, and she's then she gone. just runs, smacks the guy, and then just starts beating him to death on the floor. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Oh, everyone else is just, like, watching in stunned silence. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she's so good. She also impales someone on a unicorn head that's strapped to the front of her bike at one point, which yes. is great. And another, like, really memorable uh, death scene. It's not by Apple. I think it's the kid this time. Is it the parasol? Yes. It's just insane. <laughs> it's just, oh, it's so good. It, like, this is the sort of movie that makes me feel like making movies would be fun. Yes. Like, I think you can watch some movies and you don't get that, like, oh, wouldn't it be fun to do that, you know? But, like, this just makes the whole process look like a blast. Yeah, 100%. So, if if you had the choice between Apple... Also, can I ask, do you think that name is because of... Like, do you think it's a deliberate, like, reference to Apple products? Yeah, I'd assume so. Like, when I first watched the movie, it didn't really register. And then when I watched it this time for the podcast, I kind of was a bit smarter. Yeah, I think I think that's probably you know definitely what it was. Okay, or at least I'd, I'd imagine that's what it was. Okay. Yeah, no, 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 like it would make sense. Yeah, yeah. So, um, let's say hypotheticals: you and Apple are dating, and it's going well, and you take her to meet your parents. Okay. So, in this universe, is it the apocalypse? No. Okay. This is just like tomorrow. You meet Apple, right? Right. She's a robot still. Yep. Okay. You take her to meet your parents. Do you tell them she's a robot? Yeah. Why wouldn't I? What if they thought that was weird? I'd tell them to stop being judgmental. So you think, like, if society ever got to the point where it made robots, like, like Apple, you think that it's okay to date them and, like... Yeah, so long as they're... If if you're talking about fully sentient, effectively just life, but it's a robot... Yeah. Like, not... I don't think it's... Well, it's not not okay. Like, sex robots, whatever, that's fine if they aren't sentient if something's aware yeah then you know that's different because then you yeah I don't know what I'm trying to say so yeah if they ever got to the point where there were legitimate artificial intelligences that were like that and one of them was genuinely like I want to date you Mm. and I was like yeah sure I would I wouldn't be ashamed of it do you think we'll ever get to that stage not in our lifetime no but like in the future yeah probably have you seen the movie Her no, uh, it's on my list, and it's really high up on my list of films I need to watch. I think, yeah, that that would fit in very nicely with this conversation we're having right now. Yeah, yeah. I know what it's about. Yeah. And I've been told multiple times by Dan Palmer specifically to watch it. Yeah, you should. Yeah, I know. Um, watch Before Sunrise first, but... I'll probably watch her first, to be honest. That's because you're a dick. It's because I've been told to watch that before be- before the other ones. Uh, sorry, how long ago have I been saying to watch oh, this? Oh, years. Exactly. Probably since before her even came out. Yeah, probably. Ugh, you're the worst. Yep. Um. So, when you bring the robot home to your parents. Yep. And I'm assuming, like, do you think they'd be cool with it with with you dating a robot? I mean, they'd probably be slightly confused, maybe. Yeah. That... But if the whole world had robots like it, then I don't know. No, but this this just happens tomorrow. 
Right, then, yeah, I guess they'd be surprised because they'd be like, I didn't even know robots existed. They were this, like, advanced. Yeah. Um, do you think they'd be a little bit disappointed at the lack of children? Probably not. So you, do you, your parents don't have any aspirations to be grandparents? No, they probably do, but they've got three kids. So they are they kind of pinning their hopes on one of the other two? I imagine if I was like, I'm dating a robot, I can't have kids. Yeah. Then, yeah. But I feel like... I feel like that's such an outdated view anyway, the, the like, I need to have grandkids. I, I don't know parents of people our age that are doing that. No, that's a fair point. But um, out of, like, you and your siblings, who do you think your parents would be happiest with them having children? I don't think they'd be unhappy with any of us having kids. <laughs> they'd be I livid. Feel like, I feel like the issue is you really want there to be, like, some interesting thing, and there's not because my parents are just reasonable people. <laughs> no, I like the idea that they're just like, Jack... Please never procreate. But then, but to like, but then to your like care. siblings, they're like, "You guys give us ten grandchildren." And if that was the case, that would be hilarious. But unfortunately, really would be. Liam, it's not. That is a shame. In I, your family, does your mum want you to? Have no, it? she thinks that's the worst idea ever. Yeah, that makes sense. This is what I mean. Your family is so much nicer than my family. I think your mum's nice. She's just being nice to humanity as a whole, but not to me. As She's a trying individual. to save us from the spawn of Liam. Like you know, uh, Omen. The movie Omen. Yeah. The Omen. Yeah. I feel like that's how I imagine your kids would be. Like Damien? Yeah. That would make me the devil. Yeah. I'm not that bad. Hmm? I think listeners of our podcast can attest to the fact that... No, you aren't that bad. I'm being over the top. It's yeah. more like... I'm so quite what I picture, Genuinely, what I could picture happening is, do you remember Only Fools and Horses? Yeah. Do you remember when Del Boy had his son, Damien? No. Okay, well, uh, later on in the series... Del Boy and his wife have a child called yep. Damien. Yep. Uh, and it despises Rodney. Okay. Like, every time, even as a baby, whenever it sees Rodney, it, like, cries and stuff, and Rodney is scared of the child. And the whole implication was that Damien was basically the son of Satan. I feel like that's what I imagine your kid would be. Like, like you'd be like, Jack, look, it's it's my son. And I'd be like, oh, man, that's really nice. And then, like, I can imagine the baby being really scary to me. To, but just to you. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Like, everyone else just thinks this baby's totally normal. Um, so back to Turbo Kid. Yeah. What did you think of the the like the superhero aspect? Uh, it's it's weird. I like it. It's, yeah, it's a bit out of left field. Like the yeah. So there's a, the novels, the the comics that he's reading, which are about a man called Turbo Rider. Yeah. And then the implication is that it's just a, like a comic book. And then about halfway through the film, he discovers a crashed spaceship that <laughs> contains the corpse of Turbo Rider. With a suit of armour and a glove that fires, like, ex- like explosive laser beams. But it does need charging. They also don't explain that ter- there's no... No one is surprised that Turbo Rider's real. No. It's well, great. I was it's- wondering if maybe, like, Turbo Riders was, like, um a bit like G.I. Joe. So, like, Turbo Rider yeah. wasn't one person, but it was, like, a an army, almost. Well, no, I think the implication is that it is one person. But I guess it is like G.I. Joe in the fact that he was real in their world. Yeah, and it was um, almost like military propaganda. Yeah, yeah, propaganda. Propaganda. Jeez, you're not, you're not that posh. <laughs> Some <laughs> classic propaganda. Propaganda, darling. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I liked I liked the superhero aspect of it. Yeah. Um, would you say this is a superhero movie? No. What genre? Uh, it's like a... I don't, what, do, what do apocalypse films usually fall under? What's like the... Sci-fi? Is there a... Yeah, so then it's. I'd say it's a sci-fi. Yeah, it's like it is. It's very Mad Max in in like premise. Okay, so if you had to describe Turbo Kid in three words, what would those three words be? Apocalypse, funny ish. So apocalypse, fun, and the greatest movie ever, which is three words by itself. The... So I guess I'd have to cut. All the no, answers, wait. So. The greatest movie ever is a bit hyperbolic. Go watch it. Would be the three words. That's a good three word choice. You. Yeah, um, super duper good. That's also a good three word choice. Thank you. Like, I, I, I'm not going to say one of the greatest movies ever, but it is, it's a rollicking good time. Yeah, yeah. It's... Another good three words. So, go on. What would you give it out of five, Liam? Um, I think it's a solid four out of five. Yeah. See, I think I, I would give it four point five out of five. You said it's the greatest movie ever. That's surely got to be five out of five. You can say stuff without meaning it, Liam. Why would you do that though? That's lying. It's not lying. Sorry, if you say something without meaning it, that's definitely lying. No, it's over-exaggerating. That's not a lie. It's a little white lie. Yeah, all right, fine. It's a white lie. 4.5 out of 5. That's a good score. Thank you. Um, I, try- I tried really hard. Would you say, like, 
top 10 of the movies you've ever seen or top 20 or top 50 I mean I don't have lists like you but I guess it would probably fall somewhere in the like, top 20 okay so so people can understand where you're coming from right could you give the name of a movie that you think is better than this and a movie that you think is worse but like by a margin yeah I was gonna say that doesn't make any sense because I'd go Star Wars is better than this Fantasia was worse than this Fantasia is terrible isn't it do we agree yeah, we on that we had this discussion last time yeah 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 Everyone agrees. No, they don't. Yeah, they do. No one likes Fantasia. No, some people really do if like any it. Of you, if, listeners, if any of you like Fantasia, please write in and explain to us why you like it. Yeah, I'd be curious to know how wrong you are. I mean, not even that. I just gen- genuinely would find it interesting to see what someone's viewpoint who likes it was. When was the last time you watched it? As a kid. Do you think if you watched it now as an adult, it might be different? I can't even imagine trying to watch it. I tried recently and it was laborious. Yeah, I can imagine it- just not a great movie. Yeah. So, so yeah. So, so one movie that that you say is marginally better than one that you would say is marginally worse. See, well, I don't, I don't know, because mine isn't like, the way my brain works with these films. It doesn't like. All right, put I'll them on help. A scale. Do you know what I mean? I'll help. Is this better or worse than the first Mad Max film? I haven't seen the first Mad Max film. Is this better or worse than Mad Max Fury Road? I think this is slightly worse than Fury Road. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Is this better or worse than Total Recall? Remake or original? Original. Haven't seen the original. Is this better or worse than Star Wars? Worse. Which Star Wars? Episode 1. Better. <laughs> Episode 2. Better. Episode 3. Better. Episode 4. Worse. Episode 5. Worse. Episode 6. Worse. Episode 7. Worse. Okay. Well, you heard it here first, folks. So there you go. On Jack's scale, it's Better than some of those films and worse than some of those films. Yeah. What about Top Gun? Better. Better than Top Gun? I'm not a huge fan of Top Gun. What is wrong with you? Too much naked volleyball. Sorry, what's wrong with that? They're all very toned men. Yeah, again, what's wrong with that? Nothing. Nothing's wrong with it. I'm like, just not a huge if, fan If of we're it. allowed to fetishise like, women running around in like skimpy underwears, then surely it's okay for us to be looking at men doing that as well. Yeah, 100%. It doesn't make a good movie, though. No, but why not? I, n- I don't agree with people fetishising women, so... But you do I it. don't agree with... No, I don't. You've never seen Baywatch? No, I don't watch Baywatch. Do and I'm not excited about the new Baywatch Oh, film. fuck off, that's going to be brilliant. You Yeah, because you like fetishising women and The Rock. No, actually, you're way off base. I like fetishising The Rock and Zac Efron, and both are going to be in Baywatch. Yeah, so that is your ideal film. It's going to be fucking glorious. I'm so it's it's probably my most anticipated movie of next year, and we've got Star Wars Episode to to Eight coming out next year. It. Why not? Because you're not allowed to masturbate in cinemas. Yeah, you can. It's special ones. You're just not allowed to be caught doing it. <laughs> <laughs> That's sort of the way most crimes work. Exactly. Um, but no, like I, I think I can control myself. Okay, we'll see. So okay, I I have a very serious question about Turbo Kid now. All right, go on. What could they have done to make this movie better for you? Um. Well, you are you answer it first, and I'll think. Um, they could have put the rock in there. Okay, so we're allowed to just be silly buggers, aren't we? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Uh, it would have been so much better if, when I put it on, it dished out a bowl of popcorn and a blowjob. Yeah, there you go. Um, no, genuinely though, like, could you imagine the rock playing the role of like the guy that like, the, the grown I think up it would guy. have detracted from the other actors. What if it was the rock playing Skeletor and he still didn't speak? Yeah. And you never saw I him without his mask on. I could see that. That would be kind of cool. That would be, wouldn't it? Because that would be like a cool, like, bone. You'd be like, oh, I sort of vaguely recognise the body shape of that. And you'd be like, oh my god, it's the rock. It wouldn't even be the body shape. It'd be that winning smile. You don't see his mouth. You'd just know it was there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you think that would make the film better? Yeah, if The Rock played Skeletor, yeah. Okay, so so that was my suggestion. Which was and that's suggestion. not detracting from the guy that played Skeletor. No, he is good, but like, he's good. literally no one is The Rock. Yeah. So what do you think could make the film better? <laughs> I don't know. Zac Efron playing the kid? Oh, no, that would have been much brilliant. I'm not a fan of Zac Efron as you. What? I don't like Zac Efron that much. What have you seen him in? Loads of stuff. No, let's do some real talk. What have you seen him in? List some fucking films that he's in. Bad Neighbours. Haven't seen it. Uh, High School Musical. Haven't seen it. Me and Orson Welles. Haven't seen it. High School Musical 2. Haven't, se- haven't seen it. 17 again. Haven't seen it. That Awkward Moment. Haven't seen it. The Lucky One. Haven't seen it. Neighbours 2. Haven't seen it. Day Grandpa. Haven't seen it. We Are Your Friends. Haven't seen it. Parkland. Haven't seen it. The Paperboy. Haven't seen it. Liberal Arts. Haven't seen it. New Year's Eve. Haven't seen it. Charlie St. Cloud. Haven't seen it. Hairspray. 
Don't think I've seen it. Firefly. What are you talking about? He's in the Firefly um, TV show. No, he isn't. Yes, he is. As who? Uh, young Simon. Oh, is this when he's like a kid? Yeah, in, in 2002. Ooh. Okay, I have seen it. He's good at that, isn't he? <laughs> I don't remember a minute. <laughs> Do you know what really bothers me? Like now, Go on. now I absolutely adore Zac Efron. Okay, that's mm-hmm. no secret to anyone. He is like around, like just just about two months older than me. Okay. Yeah. And he looks like the way he looks, and I look like the way I look. Yeah, how did that happen? I know that's how the world works. It's no, 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 no. But, but literally, how did that happen? Like, I'm not even talking about like his face. Ignore like anything genetic, and just look at his body. All right. Well, let me. Do you want me to actually tell you how that happened? Am I and gonna, how you didn't end up looking like? Am that? I going to like the answer? Probably not. Then I don't want you to tell me. Okay. So that was our thoughts on Turbo Kid. We hope you enjoyed Turbo Kid. If you did. Drop us a message, let us know. Um, next time, don't forget, we'll be doing Southern Bastards Volume 1. So if you want to get involved, try and get us maybe a tweet or a direct message on Twitter or even an email. And details of how you do that are coming up. Send that over to us and we'll be delighted to read it out on the next episode of Nerd on Nerd. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Nerd on Nerd. I've been Jack Hempster. I've been Liam Underwood. Uh, if you want to get in contact with us, you can tweet us at Nerd on Nerd. Or you can email us at nerdonnerdpod at gmail.com. Don't forget, because you do, guys. You do. Some of you forget. Go and rate us on iTunes. Give us five stars. I'm not even going to pretend like there's any other option. We're begging you to give us five stars. That's how pathetic we've gotten. Stop saying we. What? You keep saying we. You're the one that's begging them for five stars. All right, fine. Liam says go give us one star. I say go give us five. I didn't say that. Also, we have a YouTube channel, which, again, we haven't got the custom URL for yet, but we will we soon, hopefully. We need 100 subscribers. So if all of you go and create fake accounts 100 times, we'll have way more than that. We literally only need 96 more subscribers. See, guys? So there you go. If one of you makes 96 fake accounts, we're sorted. Two of you could only make about 45, and we're well on our way. Exactly. So it's, it, I mean, it's barely any work on your part, guys. If... But yeah, until then, the way to find us is search Nerd on Nerd. I usually search episode one. It's called A Fleshlight. And that gets you there. Uh, hopefully at some point, just typing in Nerd on Nerd will get you there. That's the dream. But I mean, we do dream pretty big on this show. Bye. Bye. Bye.